Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Team Fight Tactics. This is taken from a double up game with Antisocial Monkey. And the theme for this game is trying to reach the top of the double up ladder and reach the master tier of double up. It's something that I've been pushing for for quite a while. Uh, I've not managed to make master tier in any of the previous sets, but uh, <laughs> I was getting pretty close in this set. Wanted to record a video about that featuring this game. Uh, Master's tier is about a little bit less than 1% of the double up player base, so it's pretty pretty tough to get there, much as it is in uh, normal team fight tactics. So ASM's queued up with me. ASM is already Master's tier in double up for team fight tactics. So is Headwinder as well. We were headed for the three champions portal. We do not get the three champions portal. Instead, we end up with Scuttle Puddle, which always seems to have a ton of people run to it whenever it pops up. People love the additional loot that it drops. So just to give a little quick background here while we're just on the initial minion stages, again, we've been playing Double Up ever since it first came out. I believe it started in set six, if I remember correctly. Uh, it is officially still in beta, which <laughs> over two years later, even though uh, it's basically been a finished product ever since then. But theoretically, this is still in beta for what that's worth. Uh, we are still supposedly supposed to get custom double up lobbies at some point in time. We have never gotten them. We would really like to get custom double up lobbies because we could use them for our Friday morning games, but uh, that has not happened. It uh, doesn't look like we're ever gonna get that feature at this point in time. Still, we have played a lot of double up. In fact, I've probably played more double up games than non double up games in, in a lot of the recent sets. Uh, and it's just a really, really fun game mode. We've always said we think it's just a better version of Teamfight Tactics than the uh, single player game mode. As you see me race over there to get that coin to make sure I'm at 10 gold. There's just kind of more going on. You have to worry not just about your own board, but you also have to be thinking about your, your partner's board. And there's just a lot of room for strategy in this. They've changed around how it works a number of times in the different patches. I think it's in pretty good shape right now. The one thing that they need to do is they need to make it so the spatulas are not so common in this game mode. The game is balanced around spatulas being rare. But in Double Up, they're still super common because they've never adjusted it from past sets where it was very easy to get spatulas. Uh, set 10 is balanced around spatulas being very hard to get. So supposedly that's going to be coming in an upcoming patch. Of course, by that point in time, the set will be almost over. So who knows? But uh, that's like the one issue is spatulas are way too frequent. All right. Anyway, so it's time to select our augment. At this point in time, I still have no idea what I'm playing. I actually have a very weak board here. So I'm looking here, metalheads if I wanted to go pentakill, but I really have no pentakill units. I don't really want to force that if I don't have that. I don't like what doesn't kill you. Rich get richer always feels greedy to me. So I was like, uh, escort quest. Gain a training dummy, you gain three gold every time it survives a player combat. I don't think this is really the right time to take the escort quest because you want to take escort quest when you think you have a strong board that's going to be capable of win streaking and i i did not feel like i had that here because my board overall is uh is pretty questionable at the moment i don't really have a carry i don't really have anything to play through but good news is Antisocial Monkey's got my back. He is playing his normal reroll board. He's going to be playing Punk reroll. And he has managed to find me a two-star Corky. And uh, that sounds great. So, like, I really didn't have anything to play through, but he's got me a Corky. And uh, that actually takes me up to four Corky. So as soon as I see that, I was like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll just look to play Corky in this lobby. Uh, it's a possibility. I could either look to try to reroll for Corky or just use him as a transition unit and then go into uh, better late game units from there is the idea. So anyway, now the Corky at least gives me some kind of a board to play through. I would also really like him to win this fight against the Jinx, but uh, no, I'm going to lose that. So my training dummy is going to die. And the insulting thing is that enemy Jinx is actually going to print a gold coin in the process on her gambler's blade. So that was that was like adding insult to injury. Not only does Corky lose the 1v1 duel, um, <laughs> that person also printed an extra gold coin in the process. So I do not manage to protect the training dummy on this first round. All right, so continuing onwards, I am going to hit the two-star cannon, though, and that immediately means that I'm going to have better frontline. There's also an Amumu, so I have been thinking Bruiser frontline, and now I will just switch very smoothly into Guardian frontline here. I might as well start putting some of our tank items on the cannon. Note that I still don't have a headliner yet. I haven't seen one that I like. The only one that I really liked was I potentially could have taken the... There was a Tarek headliner on the very first round of the game, but uh, it, I didn't end up going in that route. Of, I thought about grabbing it, decided I would pass that up for some different options, but I have not seen anything that I've liked 
since then. I'm scouting around at the other boards. There is someone who is playing Corky. There's actually multiple people playing Corky. I think there's two Corky headliners out of the pool. And when I saw that, my decision was like, all right, do I want to re-roll for Corky? Do I want to just try to push levels? And as soon as I see that there's that many Corkies out of the pool, I was like, all right, not going to try to re-roll for the Corky. I'll just play Corky for now, use Corky as a transition unit, and then we can look to find something better after that. Uh, this round, I probably would have lost, but then Antisocial Monkey comes over to my board, and I'll sell that Tarek that was sitting on the bench to get to 20 gold. So I've been able to accelerate my economy pretty nicely here. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. There's a Bruiser Tom Kench in the store. I was like, do I want to play this? Uh, maybe. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it. Tom Kent can just sit there on my board. I, I wouldn't mind getting a two-cost headliner, though. I think I have decent odds for that. So I, I think about this, think about this, think about this. Do I want to play this? And ultimately, I was like, you know what? I'll pass on this. I still would like to get something better. If I can win this round then uh, and, and keep the target dummy alive, then I'll actually be at 30 gold here. <laughs> so that's a couple things kicking in. That is in part the Scuttle Puddle gives us extra loot. Uh, you get extra loot from uh, when you get ever you get this portal, and uh, I did also get the as the uh, as the training dummy escort quest to kick in on the last round, and that gave me three additional gold. So yeah, uh, looks like I'm gonna win this round as well, and then that's gonna take me up to 30 gold. ASM's coming in just in case I wasn't going to win the round, which I would have, but he's gonna help me out, and so there we go, three more gold. I'm at 31 gold here. Uh, that's a lot of money to have on stage two, three. <laughs> it's a lot of money to have on stage two, three. So my economy has really been accelerated in this game, like to kind of a crazy degree. Anyway, now it's time for the carousel. There is a spatula here. We will not get the spatula. Anytime you're not first picking double up and there's a spatula on the carousel, it's never what you want to see. So I can definitely take an item here that would be good on a, uh, a frontliner on the cannon. I would really like the misfortune. That would get me big shot trait and I could make an infinity edge. Can I get this misfortune? And yep. Fortunately, on my side of the carousel, that is a huge pickup. That can be Infinity Edge for Quirky, and it's going to put Misfortune in. That's going to get me a uh, double up trait, and it's also going to get me Big Shot trait. Or it's going to get me Big Shot trait, and it's also going to get me Jazz trait in. So there we go. Not that Jazz is going to do a lot with only three traits in, but you never know. Uh, I'm also going to find a Jinx. ASM, wow, is trying to grab Jinxes. He is, I believe, he is contested with another player in this lobby. So we're definitely trying to feed him. All those jinxes ASAP. So my board definitely got a lot stronger there. As I said, I got a, a good item for Corky. This can be transferred to somebody else down the road. I also got Big Shot trait in with Misfortune and then got Jazz trait in when combined with Bard. So we hit both of MF's traits. Not bad. So uh, my, <laughs> my augment is I have to keep the training dummy alive and I get three gold for that. This person's augment is they get a training dummy. If it dies first, they get a gold coin. So they get one extra gold coin if that thing dies first. Uh, the, what I have is uh, has the potential for significantly more gold income, but you have to keep the, the training dummy alive. Also, I'm going to get here just in time to preserve Antisocial Monkey's win streak. Although I guess he dropped us, guess he dropped around somewhere in there. But uh, we are going to be able to win that round. No, again, I want to point out again, I still do not have a headliner. <laughs> Still don't have a headliner here. I've been looking and looking and I have not seen anything that I've liked. I really just would like a frontliner here, but uh, I haven't found one that I liked thus far. I guess the Tom Kent was the only one I seriously thought about. Uh, I do have 70% odds to get the two cost headliners right now. So most of the ones that are popping up are going to be two cost headliners. I'm a bit surprised that I've been able to win three rounds in a row though without having a headliner on my board because you are giving up an awful lot of uh, combat strength by not having a headliner on the field. That said, this person doesn't look particularly strong. They have a, what is it? They're level four and they have an Annie headliner, but Annie has no items. I have no idea why they haven't made the Shojin for Annie. They have a sword on the bench. They have a tier right here. I have no idea why you wouldn't do that. I guess you could say that maybe they want to save that to try to make a blue buff on Ari later. But like, if you have the components for Shojin, just, just make the item. Ari is perfectly fine with the Shojin. She doesn't need a blue buff. So that, that feels needlessly greedy to me, but whatever. It's not my board, and uh, maybe they have something else in mind. Still, good news is I was able to win the last four rounds and get the Escort quest in all four of those rounds. So that was 12 additional gold there. Oh, by the way, I continue to see all of Antisocial Monkey's um, champions as uh, my headliners. I had a Punk Vi, 
as an option. Obviously, I didn't want that. I had a Guardian Pantheon, and now I have an Executioner Twitch. So, or no, it was a Punk. It was a Punk um, Pantheon. I might have actually grabbed the Pantheon if it had been a Guardian Pantheon, because that would have let me play four Guardians, and that would have been pretty good. But yeah, I've seen two Jinxes. I've sent both of them over to him. And then I had Vi Headliner, Pantheon Headliner, Twitch Headliner. So um, <laughs> continuing to get all things that are only useful on his board. All right, it's a minion round here. Again, the amount of money I have is pretty wild. There's another Jinx, so I'll definitely hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to the Pantheon. And look at all this loot I'm getting. Again, this is in part because it's Scuttle Puddle. You get additional loot. But yeah, look at all this money I have. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll look to play something. I think I just tossed the Gragas on the board right here. I am still hoping to um, use the send. The next time it comes up, I can send another Jinx there. We'll go ahead and make Rage Blade because they don't really have a good use for a rod otherwise. We'll make the Sunfire Cape for our front line. And I'm going to go ahead and get another Misfortune. I'm pretty happy with that. And then we're just going to hang out here for this round. Note that I'm already level 6 and like almost halfway to level 7. That is because the Escort Quest is continuing to print so much money for me. And uh, that's fueling a win streak, which is giving me more money, which makes it easier to keep winning and keeping that uh, training dummy alive in round after round after round. So there's a lot of positive synergy taking place here as uh, my board gets stronger and that allows me to win more rounds, which gives me more econ, which makes me stronger, et cetera, et cetera. There's three more gold. So I'm getting what I get, I'm at 50 gold in the bank. So I get the 10, five base, five gold per round. Well, we'll come back to that. Now I have a neck, another augment. It's actually uh, prismatic. The good news is I have the chance to take binary airdrop here, which is one of the best prismatic augments. And I'm actually in a good position to use this too. So well, what binary augment does is uh, if, if you have two items on a champion, it gives them a third item. Uh, basically for free, and that's that's pretty much what this. By the way, I'm going up to level seven here, so yeah, I'm just gonna play two Bruiser, two Guardian for the front line right now. Um, so it gives you that third item, and this actually was, looked worked out really well here because Corky only had two items. Now I know Corky's gonna roll a third item off Binary Airdrop, and I can like build my board around that. Oftentimes, when Binary Airdrop is offered in the store, I've already put three items on like my main carry, and it, it's kind of wasted if you've done that. But uh, in this game right now. I don't have a third item on any of my units, so I can easily just get the binary airdrop value and like build my whole team around it. It's one of the best prismatic augments. Also, the item that you get is not random. It's an item that's a good fit for the champion that you have. Like So like Corky as an AD carry, he's not going to get any AP items. He's not going to get any tank items. He's going to roll AD items. Now, they might not be amazing ones. Like the hurricane he got this round is, you know, okay. It's not a great item. But still, if you're getting free items on champion after champion, it's really, really good. It also scales very strongly into the late game too. Because, um, you know, as you get more items, you can keep getting more and more free items across your team. So it's just a very, very good augment. And then hey, look at this. We're going to get two-star MF. Then uh, I get the send back here. And we were trying to figure out how we wanted to um, use these sends. We actually had the idea here because this um, this uh, Jinx is being contested with another team. We had the idea that we could double send for the Jinx 3. That is, Antisocial Monkey can send me a Jinx 1 star. It'll combine into the Jinx 2 star on my team. And then I can send it back to him. Because there were a lot of Jinxes out of the pool. And we weren't sure that we, we we were not confident that he could just hit the last jinx naturally. So like here's the other person he's competing with right here. This person has seven jinxes. Between the two of us, we have nine. But uh, if we double send, we can combine it into jinx three star on his board. And we thought that that would be the best play. Um, so we're looking to head in that direction here. It is harder to hit the three star when you're contested. So we were really trying to take steps to make sure that he could hit that and also not kill his economy in the process. So. That was the goal right there. All right. Well, once again, another win. I'm level seven. I'm like a third of the way to level eight here. Pretty pretty wild stuff. But uh, I'm very content with the board I'm building. I also did get the MF two star there, which is a big help. So now I have the Quirky two star. Quirky's going to get sold and his items transferred later. Now I also have the Misfortune. And I can now start itemizing the MF as well. There's also some good stuff here on the carousel for me, potentially. Like I wouldn't mind a sword. Uh, defensive item is really good here too, because if I can put a defensive item on Kennen, then uh, he'll roll a full completed item via binary airdrop value. Yeah. So I see I'm not going to get the sword. And I was like, all right, well, we can slap this vest on him. And then that will count for uh, two items for binary airdrop. And uh, I can just go ahead and get a third completed item off that. Uh, Kennen's also going to get sold eventually anyway, so I don't need to worry about that. By the way, still no headliner. <laughs> this is like me noobing it up here. Still no headliner at this point in time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a gift round option. 
I can't remember if a spatula was an option. I think it might have been, but spatula wouldn't really do anything for me here. Like there wasn't really anything that that would do. So uh, I just go ahead and take the training dummies. And yeah, I'm almost level eight right now. <laughs> almost level eight. I do make a mistake though. I forget to, with the gift round taking place, I forget that I should put that um, vest on um, the cannon up there. Uh, by the way, we're also really close to Pantheon, getting close to Pantheon three star as well, because ASM has six Pantheons. I have two more. If I can find one more Pantheon and send to him, that'll be Pantheon three star. So our boards are definitely coming together. We're both win streaking here on 96 HP, even though I have no headliner. For whatever reason, a lot of the boards in this lobby didn't feel that strong, or it also could have just been that uh, I was getting way, way, way out in front of the lobby from an econ perspective, and sometimes that makes the game feel very easy. But then again, Antisocial Monkey is win streaking too. Like, he does not have a Jinx three star, and he's still winning all these rounds, so... I'm not, I'm not sure how he was able to do that, but I guess his board was pretty well built, even though he did not have the Jinx 3 to play through. Alrighty, now it's my chance to send him something. Obviously, he wants the Spatula and Component Anvil. He needs at least one Spatula to play Punk 6, which is what you're looking for. So we're going to look to do that. The, by the way, if that had been a Guardian Nico, it might have been worth picking up. But I'm at the point where I'm gonna, I would just want to roll on level 8 for, uh, for my, my, my real headliner. So uh, I'm going to wait. And let's see, he, does he have the item send, the champion send back? No, I think he needs one more round for the champion send. Uh, but yeah, I'm level eight right now. <laughs> I'm just going to toss the Pantheon on the board for lack of other options. One Star Pantheon is not going to do that much, but uh, now I'm going to get level eight shops on each round. I'm planning to use the minion round. Uh, now I finally remember to put the vest on Kennen for binary airdrop value. But I'm just going to use this minion round here and just uh, roll, roll a lot of gold, try to find a headliner, see what I can get. I would love to find an Ezreal headliner. I would love to find more misfortunes. Like Ezreal headliner would be great. I could probably play with a Caitlyn headliner. Uh, I'm more interested in a carry headliner than a um, a tank headliner. But what I really want is just someone who can use Corky's items. Like he has Rageblade, Infinity Edge. Those are pretty flexible items. So a lot of champions that can use them. So I'm just looking for a champion that can hold them. I'm pretty sure I would have lost this round, but ASM comes in at the last second. I get three more gold from my escort quest. And uh, that's going to count as another victory. So full win carrying into the minion round once again. Anyway, he is going to get the, I believe he gets the champion send there. Yep. And this is good timing. It's one round before the uh, champion send converts into the gold version, which is the version that takes seven rounds to cool down instead of taking, uh, I think it's five rounds to cool down, the initial one. So it's really good we managed to use them right before the champion send got more expensive. All right, I'm going to find a, uh, what is it, a, uh, a Zac in the store along with a set. So I will just swap out the bruisers I have for those bruisers. There's another misfortune. So that's nice. That means I'm at four misfortunes. If I can find a headliner misfortune, I'd already be at seven of them. There's, there's, a, there's some Kates and Thresh. I'm going to continue swapping out my units for these. Uh, Country Thresh is interesting, but no, not quite. There's another Misfortune. So if I can find a Misfortune headliner, I just have three-star MF. There's a two-star Pantheon. We're going to save that for Antisocial Monkey. Mosher set, maybe. There's some Amumus here. I can just upgrade that. Uh, there's Big Shot Misfortune. Okay, so we're just going to take that. Just going to take that. And now let's get Kaisa on the board. Uh, so that gets us four Big Shot. And then I want to get this. So I want to get this Alawi on the board as well. So I don't quite manage to get this all together, but... I've got an extra Guardian. The Pantheon can come out, and then the Bard can go in for, for Jazz Trade. But it's going to be four Big Shot, two Guardian, two Bruiser. And then if we can get up to, like, level nine, we can potentially play two Rapid Fire as well. We could try to get Kate and the Lucian on the board, too. So this is starting to look pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I, I spent a lot of gold, but, like, my board never really got weak. I was just able to do my... Uh, level 8 transition before anybody else um, really had a chance to get there. So, uh, like I said, we're just outpacing this lobby to kind of a wild extent. So, now I just have 3-star Misfortune and, like, I barely even needed to get there. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good indeed. All right. Cybernetic Bulk, that'll that'll have some synergy with the uh, extra items I'm rolling from Binary Airdrop as well. Because I'm going to have to split up my items a little bit more than normal with Binary Airdrop. Okay. Alrighty, so I, like I said, I need to get the Pantheon off the board right now. We can put the Bard back in. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, use these items. I transferred items off Corky. Did have to sell Corky to do that, but that's fine. Hopefully Corky becomes Ezreal or uh, Jin in the near future. So let's put items on MF. 
Rageblade Infinity Edge seems pretty good to me. And now we need to transfer our tank items off. Uh, I had the option to play Zack, but I was like, I think I want to play Set plus Alawi instead of Zack. That's because if I can find Yorick in the late game, I will be able to get Masha Trait in. So the idea is Amumu becomes... Uh, the idea is Amumu becomes uh, Yorick. And then uh, I can actually potentially sell the Amumu later on. Uh, or, or either sell the Amumu or I can send it over to ASM because I believe he's playing Amumu as well. But uh, yeah, we're going to be able to win this round pretty easily. And I'm still just cruising. So now I think I'm just going to go... I, I can't remember if I try to go level 9 here. Or I might want to roll a little bit more because I am trying to find an Ezreal, which would be pretty nice here. Uh, and I'm going to continue grabbing Bards. Let's see, I've got some tank items here. What do I want to do with this? Uh, I think I'm going to start trying to make Ezreal items on Corky with the intention that he just becomes Ezreal long term. But yeah, I think I end up just going to... I can't remember if I roll more here or go... I think I just go level 9 because they do have 3-star Misfortune. And I have a pretty good front line here as well. 4 Big Shot, and I said good good front line, the Alawi, the early Alawi. Uh, yeah, feeling, feeling pretty confident with this setup right now. Most of these boards are just kind of falling apart pretty quickly. Um, I was holding the Zack here. I probably should have held Zack's just in case. If I would hit Zack two star before um, set two star, I could play the uh, I could play the Zack two star, and that would be a better unit than um, set if I don't have um, uh, Yorick on my board. I think that that was what I was thinking there. All right, so we're up against a Riven three star, but it comes in at the last second, and that's not a particularly difficult unit to beat. So. On we go, still on 96 HP, 12 match winning streak here. Unfortunately, there's a spatula on this carousel. I really would prefer that there wasn't because one of these teams is going to get it. That's going to make their board stronger, but uh, uh, we'll see. I really would like the Lucian. Lucian would be awesome for me. I could just replace the the Bard with Lucian and then play Caitlyn on level 9, and then that would be the board, but uh, that's not available, unsurprisingly. So we'll go ahead and see what else we can find here. Out of these options, I would like the sword. And do I get the sword? Yes, I do. Very, very nice. I've said this before, but the hitbox on the on the uh, units on Carousel, it's in the very back of the champion. People often think it's in the front of the champ, but it's actually in the back. All right, so that's going to make Spiro Shojin. And I now have a two-star Kate on my bench. I was like, well, I have to play this unit. It, it, I, even though this is going to cost me big uh, four big shot trait, I, I can't play a one-star Corky over a two-star Kate. Like, it's just so much of a better unit. So we're going to go ahead and play that unit. And then, again, the unit we need now is Lucian. So if we can find Lucian, we can take out the Bard, and then Lucian goes in. And then that gets us... Uh, it maintains Jazz, but it gets us a uh, rapid fire trait in and Lucian's just a much better unit than uh bard so then we're also going to try to find uh need to try to find ezreal we could also try to play ezreal on level nine uh we would just add him and then if we find Jin, we can take out kaisa and play the Jin. so basically we're just playing all of the good carry units in this set like we're trying to play mf3 star uh caitlin lucian ezreal Jin. like all the good backline carry units we're just going to play all of them on our board that's the hope here anyway and i think that i can pull it off because i am so rich in this game i'm almost ready to go level nine uh by the way there's an ezreal but uh I can't play Ezreal Headliner. Uh, I just need an, an Ezreal, not an Ezreal Headliner. So there's that. Uh, also, Antisocial Monkey has found a Jin, So I believe he's going to send me the Jin if I remember correctly. Uh, that he just, just picked that up. Yeah, like why not? I need another Big Shot for four Big Shot. Um, I could just play that. Play that over the... What I really should do is probably play that over the Bard, right? Or, uh, I should, yeah, I should take out Bard and play the Kai'Sa for four Big Shot. I think that's better here. But whatever, uh, having four traits and not terrible either. Anyway, I sent the two-star Pantheon over. That made three-star Pantheon on his board. The other person who's playing Punk is not, it's not going especially well. We've been able to hit most of the Punk units. Oh, here they are. It's this player right here. Wow, good timing. You know, I, I was starting to make that point. I didn't even realize that this was the other, uh, <laughs> this was the other Punk player. Can we snipe the Jinx? Ah, she just barely survived. So that's too bad. Managed to end my win streak right before the minion round. So I guess they were strong enough to win that one. I think the healing orbs actually kicked in and helped them out quite a bit there. But I was basically econing here, as I said. I, I do think that maybe if I'd had the Kaisa in for four big shot, I might have won that round. But uh, it is what it is. Mistakes you see in retrospect. I can't fault too much. I was a, We were on 90, 91 HP here at the end of stage four. Everybody else is 20 HP or less. So... Yeah, that's uh, that's certainly not the not the worst thing to have. So I'm gonna go nine here after the minion round and just try to complete my board. And you know we look like we're in about as good shape as you can possibly get here. 
at the very least to get a top two, but uh, we're obviously hoping that we can win the lobby from here. And hey, there's an Ezreal pops out. Okay, cool. That is just the, one of the units I'm looking for. So, all right, we'll go ahead and level. And now that I have Ez, I could, there's another Jin. Now that I have Ezreal, I can, I don't have to play the Kaisa. I can just drop Kaisa. So there's our four big shot back again. There's another Kate, but I don't think I need to go for Kate three star, another Thresh. Trying to two-star some of my frontline units. All right, I guess two-star Bard. We really want Lucian here. Oh, instead I'm going to hit Jin. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I can duplicate this set. I didn't really have anything to use this cheap uh, champion duplicator on. So we absolutely have to itemize the Jin here. So I'm trying to see, think, what can I do to get items that'll be good on Jin? Okay, so I have two bows here. What's the best way I can make use of these bows? I was like, uh, let's go ahead and do a hurricane for the Kate, and then I'm gonna make Rage Blade for Jin, and then I'm hoping that I can get another item off a carousel. But yeah, we have a, we have a two-star Jin in a four big shot comp with three-star misfortune. And then I just go ahead and sell the Zac because like, what do I need Zac for? Uh, I managed to two-star the set, so I don't need Zac anymore. And I can just go ahead and sell that unit. And now we're just looking for Yorick to replace the Amumu and Lucian to replace the Bard. And then we're pretty set. Um, in terms of what I get from Antisocial Monkey, I asked for the three components because, again, I just need more components so I can make more items for, um, whatchamacallit, for a binary airdrop value. So I was like, out of these options, well, I've already made a Rage Blade for Jin. If I'm going to make another item, I think it has to be Last Whisper. I could have maybe done Nasher's Tooth, which is not terrible, but I actually did not have any Armor Shred in this comp. So I thought the Rage, I thought the uh, Last Whisper would be good here. And out of other items, I was like, I guess that means I'm making a Morellos. I have no good Morellos users. I'm just going to put it on Thresh because now if I can get another tank item, Thresh will then roll a binary airdrop item each round. So that's the hope there that um, I can just get another tank item off the next carousel and then Thresh has another binary airdrop item too. Like look at Alawi. She rolled a Warmogs for her binary airdrop item. Misfortune rolled a Last Whisper. Jin rolled a... Uh, what is it, a, a Hand of Justice, Kate rolled a Giant Slayer, like, I'm getting a lot of value out of this uh, Prismatic Augment. Also, this round's close, but Jin clutches it out. That Annie did 13,000 damage, and then we're going to be able to come over to this board. And do we have this? Note that Jin's still alive. Jin, you got this? Come on, Jin. Keep firing, keep firing, keep firing. Okay, so it, now it's down to just Pantheon. Pantheon against Lucian. Does Pantheon win this? Oh, unfortunate. That would have been nice. That would have been nice to win that round. We were very, very close to winning that one. And then for ASM, there is a spatula option, so I can go ahead and send that. Now, here's something interesting. There is a Jin in my shop. Um, the, the question is now, do I want to try to make a play for Jin 3-star? I decide, I was like, I don't think there's, it's very likely that we're going to hit Jin 3-star. I don't think that that's in the cards for this game. I still have a lot of things I need. I still need a Lowy 2-star. Um, I still need to find Lucian. I still need to find Yorick. ASM thought that I should grab the Jins, and in retrospect, I think he's probably right because by grabbing Jin and holding Jins, yes, it does cost me Econ, but uh, there's not very many 5-cost units. There's only, I think there's only 7 5-cost units in the set. It's 7 or 8. Let me just look real quick here and see how many of the 5-cost units there actually are in this set. Hold on. Um, I'll, I'll look this up while this round is going to now, now it's, uh, piqued my curiosity as far as how many of the five cost units there are. All right. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of them. Uh, and there's only nine copies of each one. So there's 72 total units in the pool that are five costs. As you see, by the way, I lose to this Riven three star that dashes right onto my back line. Unfortunately, it is a six, eight bit Riven. So yeah, uh, you see me buy the gin and then sell it, but there's only 72 of those units. So if you even have like, I don't know, uh, four or five or like six copies of one unit, you're actually thinning the pool pretty pretty substantially for the other units. So just because there's so few copies of the um, uh, five cost units, like I said, there's only 72 counting all of the units. It actually does make a difference to take them out of the pool. Every holding additional gins would increase the odds of finding all the other uh, units by like one and a half percent But for each one I take out of the pool. So uh, it probably is worthwhile to do that, even though it does cost me some econ. And there is the remote chance that we might manage to hit gin three star. I don't, I don't think that that's likely. And I don't think it would have happened in this game, but you know, you never know. We, we do have a little bit of time here. And like, there's another gin in my store. So like, who knows? Maybe, maybe it would have been helpful. But uh, yeah, in retrospect, I wish I'd grabbed these gins because I did actually end up seeing a lot of gins. There's finally Lucian. Okay, so we're going to put Lucian in. I will hold the bard because you never know. Maybe I could get a tactician's crown. Maybe I can get to level 10. That is a possibility. I could just try to get to level 10 and then put bard on the board. That would get me three jazz 
which would be pretty valuable here. But uh, so I'll hold that. And the one thing I do have to keep an eye out for is I do have to make sure I have enough bench space for Jin turrets because Jin is a substantial part of my offense. And I need to make sure I have room on the bench for him to put his turrets down. So I don't want to hold like a ton of units here. All right, this person is basically playing my board, but a much, much worse version of it. They have like one cost, one star versions of all the units I have two star versions of. So we just absolutely obliterate them. And my board is really, really strong. This is one of the strongest double up boards I think I've built in some time. So we're going to knock them down to one HP. And it looks like it's just going to be us and this other team that's on the 28 HP between us for uh, who's going to be able to win this lobby. But we've been beating them on most of these rounds. So I'm not too concerned. They're going to get knocked down to 21 HP there. And that disco board does not look all that strong. In any case, I'm going to keep rolling here. But look at the interface. It's going to say Zach 2-star, Zach 3-star. And I see that. I was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. They have nine Zachs? Wait, what? When did this happen? We were not paying attention to that. And that that is difficult. That is not good news because this Zach has 7,800 health. And uh, that Zach is just going to be absolutely unkillable right now. So I was like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's, that is not what we want to see. And at least I'm not up against them this round, but uh, oof, that is not going to be easy to deal with. A Zach three star. I don't think I've ever seen Zach three star before. In fact, I'm not really that uh, not really that familiar with what the heck he actually does as a three star unit. Let me look at his stats. What does he do as a three star unit? Uh, okay, so some three stars don't get that much stronger. Zach is not one of them. Zach's damage at two star is uh, 180% AP, 180. At three star, he is 1,200%. So he gets six fold stronger in terms of his damage. And his heal goes from 160% at two star to 800% at a three star. So his damage goes up by six times and his healing goes up by five times. Um, okay, that you think that's enough? Uh, understood they want the three star four costs to be really strong, but... Uh, most of the units get like two to three times stronger. He gets like six times stronger um, in addition to having the higher base stats. So it was like, oof, yikes. That's uh, that's an oofer right there. That was not what we were looking for. So that's, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're going to have to do the best we can, but I don't know. I know I was going to grab Kate's, but this person is actually playing Kate. See, that person Blazer is playing Kate. So I actually can't hit three-star Kate. Uh, they, there's too many of them out of the pool. So that's not possible. But uh, we will grab the Akali. Because why not? We might as well grab the Akalis. Probably should have grabbed maybe Threshes too. By the way, there's yet another Jin. I think that's like the fifth Jin I've seen. And of course, as you take them out of the pool, the odds to hit them get lower. But still, yeah, there's another Zac. That would have been better. I wish we had spotted that this team was going for the Zacs because we could have looked to take some of them out of the pool, certainly. All right. So now I want to itemize another Frontliner. I'm going to try to get items for Yorick here. Because, uh, as I said, I think extra frontliners would be good. This is the Zach three star. Now you can see I'm actually beating the rest of the board pretty easily. Uh, and if they just said Zach two star, this would not even be close. I actually think I would win this round if it continued, but the other board's going to come over and reinforce. That is the six eight bit board. So basically, what the Zach does is it stalls long enough that that uh, eight bit board is always going to come over and reinforce. And like I said, I actually think I do beat that board, but I don't have enough to beat that board. Uh, fast enough before their partner can come over. So it was like, okay, but what about the uh, what about the other board, right? Maybe I can just beat the. Uh, and here, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Yorick. I also have another uh, item to pull here. I want to get something for the Yorick. I don't think Crown Guard's an amazing item on him, but uh, it's something. So um, what about the eight bit board? Maybe I could just beat the six eight bit board, right? That's a that's a possibility. Um, so here is the six eight bit board. They are getting relatively close to the big cash out where you get infinite gold and they have uh what is it they have riven with uh, riven three star with the six eight bit so i do actually kill the riven but the problem is that mordekaiser has the diamond hands which makes him invulnerable and so ah just lose that i would have actually beaten him without the diamond hands but the diamond hands kicked in he was invincible for two seconds and then that buys the time needed for that board to win so oof we're gonna end up losing to both of them and as it turns out i'm gonna skip ahead because we actually were not able to beat this board. We actually lost round after round to them here. Um, you can see my board is really, really strong. I actually did manage to hit the Alawi two-star. I hit Lucian two-star as well here. So I managed to two-star everything except the Yorick, and I have two out of three Yorick's. But unfortunately, this other team, the 6-8-bit team, has now managed to get the 
uh, six eight bit super cash out, so they're now getting infinite gold, and we're just not able, just not quite able to punch through either of these two boards. I am up against the Zach three star board once again, and and again, it's really just the Zach three star. We can easily beat this board, um, beat every other aspect of this board. Um, but the Zach three star just stalls for so, so long. Like if you watch this fight, my back line does so much damage. We're killing everything incredibly quickly in this fight. Um, and I, like, clearly I'm going to win. We're even chipping down the Zach three star. You can see it actually does die in the fight here. I kill everything on the board, but, ah, uh, Riven three star coming over here. Just couldn't quite kill them fast enough. Can we finish off the board? No. So close. Uh, I mean, ASM had already lost and we were on one HP, so it wasn't going to be enough. But yeah, I feel like the team I built was absolutely unreal. But in the end, we just could not quite overcome the Zach three star combined with the rest of that team. Uh, so why am I showing a game where we came in second place? Uh, the reason for that is this was still good enough in order to get promoted to master tier. I was at, I think, 85 LP. Uh, diamond one and this was enough to put me over the top so it was a really big moment for me i've been playing double up for what uh, this is the fifth uh, ever since it came out five splits in a row never managed to make it to master like i said it's less than one percent of the player base so it's very difficult to make it here and uh I was just very, very pleased to make it here. So kudos to all the people who joined with me. Antisocial Monkey, JDPO, Grillo, Symbol, Headwiner, the main ones. I think a couple other people over the years. But it was a real milestone. I was glad to make it here. And I can't thank all of you enough for helping me out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this series. We'll definitely continue doing the TFT videos. Until then, take care, folks. I'll see you again soon.